When we know whose we are, we know who we are. Greetings and blessings to all of you, my friends. You know, we're coming to the end of our journey through this Lenten season, and so thank you for joining me over these past weeks. As you recall, we spent the last five weeks dispelling these five lies that we often buy into. Let me, let me remind us of what those are. The first one is I am what I have. The second one is I am what I do. Thirdly, I am what other people say or think of me. The fourth one, I am nothing more than my worst moment. And I'm nothing less than my best moment. So these can be very powerful and convincing. They often get reinforced and affirmed by people all around us without us realizing it. And they can easily become our identity, how you and I, how we define ourselves. But living by them, as we know, brings about stress and anxiety and pain and disappointment and regret and you know, a whole lot of unnecessary sadness and, and who knows what else. This is not the Lord's will for you. This is not the Lord's will for any of us. The Lord's will for each of us is that we live our true identity as beloved sons and daughters created in God's image and likeness. You and I, friends, we are defined by God's grace. And as I said last week, our truest identity isn't something that we create or build ourselves. It's a gift we receive whereby we become adopted children of God, beloved sons and daughters, partakers of God's divine nature. We are given a new life in Christ, becoming co-heirs with him in a temple of the Holy Spirit. This is what happens in the sacrament of baptism. This is what the catechumens are looking forward to in coming into the church on Holy Saturday night at the Easter Vigil. So I invite you to pray for them, that they will embrace wholeheartedly this new identity. You know, Pope St. John the 23rd was once asked, so what was the most wonderful day of your life? Was it when you were made a priest or a bishop or when you were elected the Pope? And he answered without pause, well, the most wonderful day of my life was the day of my baptism. For on that day, I belong to Christ and his church. I mean, how beautiful is that? You know, baptism is the great sacrament of belonging and of identity. When we know and embrace who we belong to, then we know who we are. You know, for Jesus, his baptism was supremely the moment when he learned his deepest identity, when he learned to whom he belonged, when he heard the words from his beloved father, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know, at Jesus' baptism, the spirit comes down upon Jesus. Um, the father expresses his delight in Jesus, but most importantly, Jesus' essential identity is proclaimed. This is my son. And remaining faithful to his identity as a son of God would ultimately lead Jesus to his death for each and every one of us. But Jesus' baptism was about belonging and about identity. And this is true about our baptism. When we know again whose we are, we know who we are. In that wonderful moment in the sacrament of baptism, when the sign of the cross was traced upon your forehead, when the water was poured over your head in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you were anointed with sacred chrism, you were marked as Christ's own forever. In that moment, we belong to Christ. This is our truest identity. This is your truest identity. You are Christ's own forever and your true identity is only in him. So friends, living this reality has the power to set us free. No longer do we have to try to create an identity for ourselves. No longer do we have to live those lies, nor do we need to look for our value in things or from others, nor do we have to try to earn God's love. We belong to God and God already loves us more than we can possibly imagine. So our challenge is to become who we already are. Let me say that again. Our challenge is to become who we already are. You know, so often we 
find it hard to accept and to celebrate and truly embrace that unique person that God has created us to be. So often we spend time wishing we were someone else or something else. So I would invite you over the course of this next week, it's Holy Week, as we prepare for the celebration of Easter, take some time and contemplate the gift of your baptism, whereby you were given your deepest identity in Christ Jesus. It was the most defining moment in your life and should be celebrated as such, at least on par with your birthday. Have a birthday party on the anniversary of your baptism, celebrating your birth into the life of God's kingdom. Also in prayer this week, return to the baptism of Jesus. This is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. And allow the Lord to speak to your heart, saying that you are his beloved son or his beloved daughter. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. And during this holy week in prayer, meditate on one of the passion stories. You know, this is the great act of love, the greatest act of love in human history. The moment when the Lord opened the gates of heaven for all of us. This was the event that has led to your deepest identity. So I want to thank you for being with me over these last six weeks. I hope that what has been shared has been beneficial to all of you, um, if nothing more than to remind you of who you really are. So have a blessed Holy Week. And happy Easter, and may God bless you.